change can be good. It is often the catalyst that catapults a good thing into a great thing. Many changes occurred for West Virginia for the 2008 basketball season. And those changes were successful because a group of young men were willing to become better basketball players. These young men were mature enough to respect history and how records and past success do not lie. The 2008 Mountaineers saw standing before them the fifth winningest active coach in college basketball, and they were ready to win. Teach and win is exactly what Bob Huggins does best. Returning to his alma mater, Huggins poured every ounce of his energy into West Virginia basketball. And in return, his players responded with respect and every ounce of effort. Mix the two, and you have one of the best seasons in the history of West Virginia basketball. Wins over ranked teams, the most regular season Big East wins in school history, and an NCAA tournament run full of excitement with a direct result of change. In 2008, change was great for West Virginia basketball, and it was change that helped usher in a new era for the Mountaineers. A new era, the story of the 2008 West Virginia University basketball team is presented by United Bank. The 2008 campaign brought a new ball game to town for West Virginia basketball. Back home at his alma mater was the fifth winningest active coach in college basketball. Excitement filled the state as Bob Huggins was set to start his first season as West Virginia's basketball coach. Sure, there was a transition period, but the new staff bonded quickly with the players, who in return bought into the new system and were ready for Huggins' style of toughness. As for the head coach, he was now in his dream job. Bob Huggins had come home. When I first heard Coach Huggins was coming, I was kind of nervous at first. I guess we all had our doubts at first. Uh, you know, a new system, you know, different style of play. You know, once we started working, working during the preseason, and once we played our first games, you know, we realized that's, you know, that's how you really play basketball. Well, these guys, by and large, played hard, and, and, and they tried, and they were enthusiastic about trying to learn, and, you know, it took us a while. I mean, I think if you look at how many close games we lost, you know, kind of early in the year that we just couldn't, couldn't get over the hump, I think. A lot of those things had to do with our learning curve, just some mistakes that we made that we didn't make later on. You know, just little things that he teaches, you know, a lot of people think of him as just an in-your-face type coach, but he actually teaches the game, too. Once you see that it works, you know, you see how successful you can be when, you know, you're doing things the right way, then it encourages you to just continue to work on it, you know, and build from there. That's the thing about Coach Huggins, he was just, he doesn't care what other people think, you know, no matter who's on the floor, as long as he has guys who, you know, believe that, you know, they can be champions. Huggins' first squad at West Virginia consisted of Joe Alexander, Deshaun Butler, Jamie Smolligan, Wellington Smith, John Flowers, Cam Thurman, and Josh Sowards along the front line. Darius Nichols, Alex Ruoff, Joe Mazzulla, Ted Talkington, Johnny West, Will Thomas, and Jared Brown made up the backcourt. The majority of these players were not recruited by Huggins or his staff, but one thing quickly became apparent. They were ready to play hard for him and West Virginia University. The Mountaineers got out of the gate with a 4-1 start in the first month of the season, with the only loss coming by two points to seventh-ranked Tennessee. Averaging 89 points per game, WVU's average margin of victory was an impressive 43 points. Counting the last two games in November and moving into December, 
West Virginia recorded an eight-game winning streak. In the streak were victories over NCAA teams Winthrop and UMBC. The Mountaineers also pounded SEC member Auburn by 29 points in the inaugural Big East SEC Invitational. Hollywood Bob Alexander slam dunk! And Duquesne from the Atlantic 10 by 24. Also included in the streak was a 77-54 victory at Kinesis as coach Bob Huggins joined an elite group of coaches by earning his 600th career win. He became just the 29th coach in NCAA history to reach the milestone. And number 600 came as coach of the Mountaineers. The eight-game win streak came to an end in double overtime to eventual NCAA participant Oklahoma. The Mountaineers were a strong 6-1 in December and began Big East play with an impressive 10-2 record after 12 games. The Big East Basketball Conference is always one of the best in the country. But in 2008, Big East Basketball was the best. Every night in this league meant an all-out battle. And the daunting task ahead for West Virginia was that its first three league games were at Notre Dame, home against Marquette, and back on the road at Louisville. After dropping the Big East season opener to the Fighting Irish, the Mountaineers bounced back before a sold-out Coliseum to dispose of 10th-ranked Marquette. Now to Flowers, and Flowers to Alexander. Left corner, Nichols, three, up, in! Darius Nichols with a three. Right side corner, here's Flowers, three, too strong. Rebound, Wellington Smith, pump fakes, pump fakes again, shoots and scores two. Flowers holds it, Flowers looks, sends it up top, Alexander, straightaway, 15-footer, yes! He drives into the lane, off balance, shot good! Joe Mazzula with a right-handed scoop shot. Driving hard to the basket, layup shot, up good, and a foul! Oh, he left two of the Golden Eagles lying on their butts. Underneath the Flowers, Flowers puts up a shot off glass, yes, for the freshman Flowers. Joe drives, left corner, Ruoff for a three, yes! Over to Ruoff, he's open, here's a three for Ruoff, it's good! With 2.58 to go, Ruoff hits his fifth three-pointer of the game. West Virginia held Marquette to just five rebounds in the second half. While offensively, Joe Alexander and Alex Ruoff led the way with 19 points each. All around, it was a good day and a strong win for Mountaineer basketball. Next, the Mountaineers lost by nine to Louisville to start one and two in Big East play before regrouping against Syracuse. The Orange visited the Coliseum on January 13th and the Mountaineers were not hospitable hosts. Goes behind the uh, legs, all the way to the basket. Slam dunk as he drove by the Syracuse defender, Wellington Smith. Harris takes it to the free throw circle, fires underneath, and the ball is blocked by Flowers. Back comes West Virginia. Nichols down the middle of the floor, all the way to the basket, layup. Yes! Azula puts it on the floor, hemmed in defensively, gets a top circle for Nichols. He'll stop and pop a three. Yes! Harris Nichols on fire. Popping off an up screen is Ruoff left alone, straight away three ball. He hit it! Butler giving up ground, spins, driving to the basket, jump, stop, shot up on the glass. Good for Day, Sean Butler. Ball deflected, and it's loose, and it's controlled by Ruoff. Lead pass ahead, Missoula against Paul Harris, driving to the basket, layup, yes, and a foul! The Syracuse game, we came out and made some shots, and made some shots early. Uh, Alex, in particular, made some shots, extended the zone. And, you know, I thought our guys really did a good job. I don't know that we could execute from an offensive standpoint any better than what we did. Four players hit for double figures in the 20-point victory, led by Ruoff's 23 points and 17 from Darius Nichols. The Mountaineers follow the Syracuse victory with their third Big East win against St. John's. Goes middle of the floor to Alexander, left corner. Nichols pump fakes, 15-footer is up, in. There's Missoula driving toward the basket, all the way in, layup shot, yeah, Joe Missoula. Bounce pass, top circle, Wellington Smith gonna try a straightaway three ball, yeah! Here's side wing to Butler, Butler stops, pop, shot, pop, good. Deshaun Butler, it's tipped and stolen. Joe Alexander on a breakout, gets the rule off, touch pass, Flowers, slam, dunk! <laughs> Wide open, Flowers for a three, yeah! All the way around and about four times. Deshaun Butler paved the way with 19 points against the Red Storm, as WVU improved to three and two in Big East play, and 13 and four overall. After the St. John's win, WVU downed USF on the road without the services of an injured Joe Alexander. Touch pass right corner, Butler. He penetrates on the baseline, fall away, jumper, good! Fakes the three, drives into the lane, kicks the ball, open, left corner, Flowers, three, he canned it in there. 
against the Bulls. Butler and Nichols stepped up to contribute 15 points each. Along with a strong defensive performance from Joe Mazzulla. And I asked Joe on the huddle, I said, can you guard a big fellow? And he said, sure. Uh, and, and really did a good job. Mazzulla is fronting, which is a very interesting thing. He's very aggressive. He's running everywhere. Mazzulla driving to the basket all the way in. Spins, reverse layup shot. It's good and a foul. How do you like Joe Mazzulla? He was at an impossible angle, and he just threw the ball straight up on his way to the basket, and it fell in. Also in January, WVU closed out the non-conference portion of the schedule with a win over Marshall at the Charleston Civic Center. Bouncing inside to Alexander, slam dunk, Joe Alexander! Butler against Williams, crosses over, drives, pulls up with a jumper, it's up and in with five seconds to go. Murphy guarded by Missoula, running down the sideline with three, with two balls poked away, and it's tipped, and the second comes off the clock, it's over! They don't get a shot off, the West Virginia University Mountaineers have defeated the thundering herd of Marshall in a classic, capital classic. After dropping a one-point decision to ninth-ranked Georgetown on a questionable goaltending no-call in the game's final seconds, the Mountaineers carried a chip on their shoulders into the month of February. This team was ready to prove that it was one of the best teams in the Big East. A pivotal road win at Providence got February started on the right track. Lob pass Alexander, slam, dunk on an alley-oop for Joe Alexander. You know, I think that was a coming out party for Cam Thurman, who I thought made the play that really broke the game open when he dove at half court and kicked the ball ahead to Joe Alexander. Nichols gives to Missoula. Layup shot on the rim. Good for Missoula. Nichols scored 23 points, and Alexander added 19 points and eight rebounds in the key road win. On Valentine's night, the Mountaineers picked up a league win over Rutgers as five players hit for double figures against the Scarlet Knights in an 18-point victory. Three days later, another New Jersey team came to the Coliseum and left with the same results as Rutgers. Seton Hall fell 21 points short to the Mountaineers as Butler and Ruoff scored 15 points each. Taken out by Ruoff, flying down the floor, bounces the ball to Joe Alexander, he goes in, scoop shot, good! On the left side wing underneath the Wellington Smith. Wellington head fake, shot up and in on a reverse play by Wellington Smith. Here's Nichols down the floor. Nichols deals it right corner, Talkington for a three, yes! Teddy Talkington. As February came to a close, the Mountaineers picked up a second win over Providence before capturing yet another road victory at DePaul. Ball is raced on by Missoula. Joe on the other end. It's a four-on-one Mountaineer break on Missoula. Ruoff, layup, yes! Rebound taken by Darius Nichols. Transition West Virginia lead pass out ahead. Alexander tip pass Ruoff behind the back. Flowers, layup, good! They drop the ball inside to Alexander. He goes up, slam, dunk. Here's Joe, lead pass down the floor. Alexander makes the catch, goes up for the layup, and it is good. Rifles the ball, right corner. Ruoff, three, yes! Alex Ruoff with a massive three. Wellington Smith showing off. Missoula drives down the lane, jump pass left side. Ruoff for a three, yes! On March 1st, the Mountaineers dropped an eight-point decision to 15th-ranked Connecticut and came home to play host to the Pitt Panthers on Big Monday. Pitt defeated the Mountaineers earlier in the season on a last-second shot, but in the final home game for seniors Darris Nichols, Jamie Smalligan, and Ted Talkington, the night belonged to West Virginia. Ruoff, left alone, straight away, three-pointer. Good! 
Muito! After scoring a career-high 32 points at UConn, Joe Alexander followed that performance with another 32-point outing against Pitt to become the first Mountaineer to record back-to-back 30-point -back games since 1982. Along with 17 points from Nichols, the Mountaineers dismantled the Panthers and led by as many as 23 points in the crucial Big East win. And what a special night it was for Mountaineer seniors, especially Darris Nichols. He was the Iron Man who played in every single game during his career at WVU. He played in more games, including postseason, than any other player in the history of West Virginia basketball. Nichols was a special player. He gets everybody involved. He's, he's a leader. When it comes to just doing things and you want to see how things are supposed to be done, he's as good of a leader as anybody. He's meant a lot to us all, not, not only just a teammate, like he's a good person as well and uh, just a great leader, you know, unspoken kind of leader. He doesn't really, you know, he won't yell at people, but he'll, he'll lead by example. You know, he just kept us in games when it seemed like everyone else didn't want to be in it. And, you know, he really rallied us, just, you know, played hard and followed his example. That was just a strong move and under control by Darius Nichols. Whenever you see us put like four or five wins together and you look at the stat line, you know, Darius had good games. Uh, you know, it meant a lot to the team when he contributed. Um, it really pulled us through and kind of put us above everybody else. But I think what he is is somebody who you can always point to and say, you know, he's out here giving it his all every day. I mean, why wouldn't you, uh, because you haven't done near what this guy's done in his career, why wouldn't you bring the same kind of enthusiasm and work ethic? And, you know, and I think our guys do and did. The best point guard I ever played with. The Mountaineers certainly were making their case for the NCAA tournament, and the critics were being silenced with each passing game. To close out the regular season, the Mountaineers willed their way to an overtime victory over St. John's behind some last-second heroics from Joe Mazzulla and 29 points from Joe Alexander. In a three-game stretch, Alexander scored 32 points twice and then 29 to earn Big East Player of the Week honors and set up a postseason run for him and the Mountaineers. The important road victory at St. John's provided momentum as Huggins took his first WVU squad into Madison Square Garden for the Big East Tournament as the fifth seed, far exceeding the 10th place prediction in the preseason polls. The Mountaineers were confident. They had taken the steps necessary to receive an NCAA bid, but they were leaving nothing to chance. In game one, WVU disposed of Providence for the third time in 2008 to move into the Big East quarterfinals. Jump pass to Alexander with one on the clock. He'll put up a three. It's good! How big was that triple drive? And saying is it so, Joe? In game two of the tournament, 15th ranked Connecticut was the opponent. Despite losing to the powerful Huskies 12 days earlier, the Mountaineers had no fear.
Alexander lobs it underneath. Smalligan goes up. Slam dunk for Smalligan with 8.05 to go. Alexander goes to the basket. Slam dunk over Robinson. Woo, baby. Send it in, Joe. A Taiwan special. This one you'll remember. Joe Alexander put up 34 on Jim Calhoun's bunch as West Virginia advanced to the Big East Tournament semifinals. In the semis, Georgetown defeated West Virginia. But what a statement the Mountaineers made in New York. A statement that would be extended well into the NCAA Tournament. Let there be no confusion. In 2008, West Virginia was not a bubble team for the NCAA Tournament. In fact, the Mountaineers earned a seven seed and faced Pac-10 power Arizona in the first round at Washington, D.C. The Mountaineers had momentum, and they had one of the hottest players in college basketball lighting up the scoreboard. No player in the country had a better month of March than Joe Alexander. He turned in a five-game stretch of two 32-point games, along with outings of 34, 29, and 22 points. He was on fire. And when it comes down to it, we started making shots. Um, we knew he could play like that. We knew, you know, what his potential was that he could definitely play like that and play at that level, you know, night in and night out. So um, to see him get back to back games like that and, you know, to get on a roll, it, it meant a lot for us as a team and it, you know, helped us a lot going into postseason. Uh, honestly, I, I really don't know what everybody else saw, but I saw this all year, like, especially like in practice. It was just a matter of him just slowing down. And I think when that happened is when all of a sudden we said, you know, this guy now is starting to not just be an extremely talented basketball player, but he's starting to become a basketball player who understands how to play the game. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I think, you know, from, you know, probably the, the UConn game, the Pitt game on, Joe was as good as certainly anybody in our league. And when you're as good as anybody in our league, you're as good as anybody in America. <laughs> I think that's just a result of his hard work. You know, he's worked so hard, and you know, you can you can give uh, Coach Huggins a lot of credit for that too. Just showing him, you know, things that he can do to improve his game, and that's why his game took off so like, like that. With the eighth pick in the 2008 NBA Draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Joe Alexander from West Virginia University. In game one of the NCAA tournament, Arizona wasn't going to let Joe Alexander beat them. So Alex Ruoff, Deshaun Butler, and Darius Nichols made the Wildcats pay for their decision. Ruoff, downtown. Butler, spinning, hanging, jump shot, good. Gets a top circle, Nichols for a three, yes. West Virginia Mountaineers have not lost a game this year when they've led at halftime. And at the break, they're on top 31 to 30. A jumper up, in and out, good! Oh, it banged man. around and it goes in for three. Out front off the curl, rule off, good look. Hey, down she goes. Darius going to stop and pop a three ball. He hit it. Darius Nichols buries the three. How about their execution in the clutch? The win over the Wildcats advanced the Mountaineers to the second round against Mike Krzyzewski and his second-seeded Duke Blue Devils. If the Duke players thought West Virginia was going to be in awe, they were wrong. It's not like we got hyped up for Duke any more than anyone else. It's, it, to be honest, in practice, you're playing Duke, you're playing Xavier, you're playing Arizona, it's all the same. But the way we were playing at that time and the way we felt about playing them at that time, like everybody, I honestly had a feeling we were going to win the game regardless. We had no doubt in our mind that we could win. I think a lot of people thought, you know, this would be a great win and a big upset, but 
we, we thought we were the better team going into it, just didn't really have the respect. And uh, I think that showed with our intensity and the way we played. Puts up a prayer from the corner. It's good from the right corner for three. Are you joking or what? I'll tell you, he is a scoring machine. At 30 in three of his last six games coming in to the NCAA. Alexander, three ball on the way. Looks good. Yes! Flip-flop. Alexander backdoor cut Cam Thurman layup good. Oh, what a read by Cam. Blue off for three. Got it. Oh, how big is that? Missoula in traffic. Up and in. Thurman. He's going to get votes for governor. With 22 points and 11 rebounds, Joe Alexander led the way. And Joe Mazzula provided the fight and heart with 13 points and 11 rebounds as WVU defeated ninth-ranked Duke. It was on to Phoenix, Arizona and the NCAA Sweet 16 for the third time in four years for the Mountaineers. Phoenix, here we come, Sweet 16. Wow, we did just beat Duke. You know, I was a big contributor. It's, it's a big difference when you know, you're contributing to the win rather than just being on, you know, maybe the sidelines. Like, we weren't backing down on defense or anything at all. Like, we stayed consistent on defense the whole night. And I said, I don't see any reason why we can't win the game. You know, after that game, it just showed us that we could, you know, we could play with anybody, we could beat anybody. Well, I told you I'm psychic. I knew we were going to win that game, no doubt. <laughs> in the Sweet 16, West Virginia and third-seeded Xavier turned in a classic battle. Xavier took a big early lead. But West Virginia stormed back for a duel in the desert. Rebound taken up by Wellington Smith. Lead pass out to midcourt. Here's Al Ruoff. Al Ruoff gets by the defender. Drives in. Layup shot. Good. He dunked it. And up top, Butler for a high arcing three. Swish. How about that? Send it in, Joe. Both teams had a chance to win. But in the end, Xavier outlasted WVU, and the 2008 basketball season came to an end. While the loss hurt, it did not overshadow the successes and accomplishments of this team. For starters, the Mountaineers finished with a number 17 ranking in the country after playing a total of 12 NCAA tournament teams. Along the way, the Mountaineers beat ninth-ranked Duke, 10th-ranked Marquette, and 15th ranked Connecticut. 2008 tied the school record for most Big East wins in a single season. Now with 31 Big East wins since 2006 and 99 total wins since 2005, the Mountaineers have made five straight postseason appearances and are only one of five teams to reach the Sweet 16 in three of the last four seasons. Joe Alexander was a first team all Big East selection, giving WVU four conference first team performers in the last three years. Additionally, Ted Talkington won the League Scholar-Athlete Award, while Darris Nichols won the Sportsmanship Award. Alex Ruoff was an ESPN Academic All-American, giving WVU an Academic All-American in four of the last five years. And nine players were named to the Athletic Director's Academic Honor Roll. Coach Bob Huggins, with 26 victories, won more games in his first year than any other coach in WVU history. No coach ever took the Mountaineers to the NCAA Sweet 16 in his first season, except Huggins. And he continued West Virginia's strong postseason tradition. 
The Mountaineers are now 12 and 3 in their last 15 postseason games and 14 and 4 in the postseason over the last five years. And finally, let's not forget about the versatility of the 2008 Mountaineers. They had to learn a new style of play. And while the program has posted a 43 and 5 record in the Coliseum since 2006, this team also proved it could win on the road. For the record, the 2008 Mountaineers won half of their games away from the Coliseum. 13 of the 26 wins came away from home, a tribute to the character and toughness this team displayed. Chemistry. When you watch the West Virginia Mountaineers play basketball in 2008, it was obvious that this team had chemistry, and it seemed to get better with each passing game. They improved because they believed in their new coach and his system. They embraced change and a new style, and it clearly paid dividends. They bought into history and respected the new man that patrolled the West Virginia coaching sidelines. In return, he showed them how to play tough basketball, how to get better, and how to win. With more than 600 wins to his credit, Bob Huggins was the perfect choice to take his alma mater to a higher level. It's been a long wait for Huggins to come back and coach at his school, but when the chance came, he worked endlessly for the Mountaineers. He worked every day for the fans and for the state to continue the great tradition of West Virginia basketball and was rewarded after the season with a lifetime contract that will ensure that his career finishes as a Mountaineer. It was through the hard work of Huggins and his players that another winning chapter was written in the program's history. There was a transformation for Mountaineer basketball in 2008, a transformation that will only get better in the years to come. By welcoming home one of its own, a new era has begun for West Virginia basketball. A new era, the story of the 2008 West Virginia University basketball team has been presented by United Bank. This has been a presentation of MSN, the Mountaineers Sports Network.